Hey guys, in the last video, we have performed the fit on our data set. So we have did as model.fit and we have specified a training data, validation data, and we had specified the validation steps and the steps per epoch. And we have done all this activity and we were able to perform the fit. Now, if I just come down on the results that we have got from the last session. So this is the result that I have got over here, guys. So it says by the end of 11th epoch, so the validation accuracy was 0.51 and I have a message that says as validation accuracy did not improve from 53% which I had got at the 6th epoch and because it did not improve for 5 epochs continuously it is performing the early stopping. Okay. So why is it happening? The reason it is happening because observe over here guys, I have specified my callback as monitor my validation accuracy and have patience till five epochs. If the validation accuracy did not improve after five epochs, then just stop the training over there because I don't want to use the resources. And we could observe over here as the training proceeds and it actually performed even worse as well. So because of this reason, the system found out that, okay, even after five epochs, the accuracy is not improving. Let me just stop the training over there. So this is the working of this TensorFlow callback early stopping. And if you look at it, there are some logs which says as uh, validation accuracy improved from this to this and there is a saving a model and it is happening at the end of each epoch. And if you look at it, it just saved the best model. So at the seventh epoch, when the accuracy was lesser than the previous model, it did not save. So my model, which is already there early, that is inside this best underscore model, this has the best model for me. All right, guys, so this is the importance of using TensorFlow callbacks while performing the deep learning training. And we could observe that the maximum accuracy that have reached for this model fit is 53%. Obviously, it's not so great, isn't it? So I, I still have a lot of things to do. Now, before we look at its working, I mean, like now before we look at the strategies of improving, let's do one thing let's perform the validation on this best model that we have got now as i mentioned already this will have our model over here so this is our best model so let me save let me load this model from this file so i'll say it as from tensorflow.kras.models import load underscore model and I'm going to load the model. I'll say it as model is equal to load underscore model. And inside the parenthesis, I'll specify the complete path. So I'll just copy the path and I'll paste it over here. So I'll just execute this. So this model will have the best model parameters. Now, if I want to perform the evaluation on my test data, that means how it is performing on my test data, I can just say it as model dot evaluate and I can just specify my test data. Okay. So the accuracy that I'm getting on my test data is 50%. That's okay. So that's the accuracy that I'm able to get on my test data. Okay. Now let's do one thing. Let's uh, analyze our history object. So history is something which has all the information from my training. So history dot history. So I have loss, accuracy, validation, loss and validation accuracy. So let me just create a plot. I'll say it as import uh, matplotlib.pyplot as plt, all right, plt.show and plt.plot and I'll say history well accuracy okay and then i'm going to say it as color is equal to yellow and then i'm going to print this against validation accuracy so i'll say val underscore accuracy i'll say color is equal to red so this is how our training has happened so this is where my validation accuracy was and this is like this is how it is getting changed guys so my accuracy validation accuracy is like this and the yellow one talks about my training accuracy okay 
and we can create a pl similar plot for loss as well loss and validation loss to get the visualization as how the loss is being changed as the training proceeds okay so now that we have seen how to train our deep learning model now let's look at the ways that we can improve our model so one of the important ways that we could improve the model that we have just trained is one we can add dropout layer so in case of dropout layer what it does is it it just removes some neurons that means it is going to zero out some values guys it is going to zero out some neurons and it does it in a random manner and it has been found that it it will help us in performing the fit okay one we can add a dropout layer on our model and the another strategy that we could use is increase number of layers and number of neurons in each layer so this is another strategy that we could use the and the next strategy that we could use is train on entire data set instead of loading part by part so we have to train on our entire data set itself and obviously when i train on my entire data set it will definitely be able to learn better and better from the data set that we have and also use the batch size which can be accommodated maximum on my ram that we have okay so this is another thing that we have now let me just show an example as how you can add a dropout layer okay so i'll do one thing i'll open up i'll copy this model definition and i'll paste it over here now for the example purpose i'm going to add a dropout layer for this now to add this dropout layer i'll uh, simply add a dropout layer guys so i'll say it as so let's assume after max pool 2d i'll apply a dropout layer over here so i'll say it as model dot add dropout okay so this is the dropout layer and i'll specify the rate i can specify a rate in this example i'm saying it as dropout as 0.3 okay now i'll add one more dropout layer after this dense layer okay and then i'm sending it to my output layer so if we do it like this and uh, we can also further increase another we can add one more dense layer so let's say 32 and then we can just try out and see whether whether it would actually help us or not so i'll do one thing i'll compile my model again and after the model compilation i'll perform the fit now this time while performing the fit i'll uh, specify the steps per epoch as 32 that means i'm doubling which means i'm running for more number of times okay so i'm i'm using i'm using more data for training okay and validation step size 32 so i'll just execute this okay so the training is already started and we can observe this one important thing guys see at the end of first epoch so i have reached the accuracy of 53 percent wow that's a good sign isn't it so yes now by the end of third epoch i've reached the accuracy as 57 percent and it's still going on so even though it is taking more time to train but still it's worth it isn't it so i'm getting more and more accuracy from the model that we are training and thanks to the more data that uh, my model is able to consume and along with that like by adding the dropout layer and as well as other techniques that we have just applied all right guys so this is how we can further improve the model as well and uh, apart from this you can check out with various optimizers currently i have used the optimizer as adam and you can check out with various other optimizers and see how it is working with other optimizers as well so these are the common uh, steps that we would do once the training is complete for any deep learning model okay so with this we come to the end of this video on how to perform the training on convolutional neural network and from the next video so we are going to look into the new topic that is called as transfer learning 
So transfer learning is one of the advanced topic when it comes to deep learning. So we'll make use of already trained model and use that model to make our life simple. That means we'll use the learnings from the previous data. And on top of that model, we are going to tra retrain on our data set and to make sure that we are getting the best results with just little amount of training. So that's the benefit of using transfer learning. And we are going to explore from the further videos of this section. So I'll see you next time. Thank you guys. Take care. And if you are new to us, please subscribe to us. Okay. So thank you. I'll see you next time.